What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with the Uno X career mode. Couple of exciting races including Paris-Roubaix coming up today. But first we have the Exilia Basque Country Tour. You can see on screen right now Tobias Hull and Johansson. Only nine race days so far this season. We're in April. He is going to be leading us at this race. He's peaking as well, Tobias. And this is his final outing before the Giro d'Italia. He was quite disappointing at the Tour de France of course last season. He's heading to the Giro. He will lead us there and potentially at the Vuelta at the end of the season with I think Skelmos are leading us at the Tour de France as I've alluded to in earlier episodes but um yeah this is his final warm-up race let's build some confidence as we know with the Exilia Basque Country Tour plenty of climbs I think I saw Tade Pogaccia once said this is the most difficult race he has ridden and that was after he won his first Tour de France unless I'm mistaken but stage three really the only easy one stage four is a TT stage five and six absa Absolutely brutal with the Arase climb, which featured at the Vuelta Espana a couple of seasons ago, I think, and it was an absolutely brutal stage, a demolition job. So this is going to be a pretty difficult race. And a strong team here to support Tobias. Here's our leader. His brother is here too. Torsten Train, Andreas Kron, Anton Sharmik, all good climbers as well with Nicholas Larson and Captain Price here for the time trial. Let's get it. And I've underestimated this race many times before. This stage on paper doesn't look massively difficult, but the percentages in that final effort and pretty much all the climbs, they're just so difficult. All the climbs are so steep in this part of the world. It's such a difficult race. Looking... At the start list, it's going to be even more difficult because Roglic, Carapaz, Pagacha, Almeida, Emric Mas, Remco, Evenepoel, of course, our rival from Paris-Nice earlier in the season. They are all here. Ooh, Primoz Roglic punctured with 60k to go. He's back on very swiftly, though. So 27k left. Breakaway our course. The Aya climb is coming up. And again, look at the terrain we've had so far. Look what we still have to come and look at our guy's energy. I'm going to try and keep Anders here. He's on a great day. That's 70 pure hill rating. Not very helpful for the Basque Country terrain, but um, we'll try and keep him around in the GC today. And man, look at these percentages now on the Eclano guy. Now I'm going to try and really put the pain on with Andreas Kron on the front. He can maybe go to 90, stay at 90 and look at the struggle and the hurt we are creating now in the main group. And Andreas Kron over the top first. That is a fine ride. Getting some points in the KOM jersey as well. Are we going to drop anyone though? And well, it looks like the answer is yes. We have 20 riders at the front. Who is behind? Pagacha is caught behind. Almeida's dropping back to help out Tale Pagacha. Let's kick on. 3k to go and go for the stage win. So I think we'll lead out Anders today with Tobias. Here comes Anders. Tobias, Kron. They're all going for victory under the the Flam Rouge. Roglic is here though. Can any of our guys beat Primoz Roglic in a sprint? No, we cannot. Primoz Roglic wins the first stage just ahead of Maui Van Savenen, but a very successful first day in what is a really difficult race. And I'm pretty frustrated to be fair, despite a great day, because Tade does get given the same time as the front group. We all saw he was dropped. There are just 28 riders now in that front group. Nairo man, plenty of good riders are caught behind and we still have three options in the GC. And to be honest, stage two looks even more challenging with the San Palau climb. Very, very tricky indeed. Another factor which makes this race so great and so difficult is that immediately you have great riders drops on the first stages and immediately they're in the breakaways. Esteban Chavez, Julio Ciccone in today's breakaway. All right then, here we go. 10 and a half K is left in this one and we have three riders left at the front. 85 riders still here and this tempo is just absurd i mean look at the gradients as well guys we're gonna have to try and follow primos especially if he tries an attack but instead the man attacking is aurelion peripentra we are the team trying to bring him in we have three very good riders apparently in really good form here in anders tobias and andreas cron let's kick it up a notch over the top up to maybe 95 can we reel him in the tempo has been tough. We still have over 30 riders here though, so not an uber selective day. Important to keep our three GC options though to the front and I'm pretty sure Peripentra, is he going to be caught? I'm not sure he is. Maybe we should have followed. And at this point, I think Aurelian Peripentra has this stage all but sewn up. And we are now competing for second place. What a ride by him. Andreas Kron, go for the line. Tobias, go for the line. But up the road, Aurelian Peripentra, he's two and a half minutes down. He won't take the lead of the race, but he does take stage two of the Basque Country Tour. Can we finish second with Anders just beaten by Sepp Kuss there? What an attack. I didn't see that coming by Parapentra. He pulls it off, though 
we still have, I think it's going to be 25 riders on the lead time, so it's all to play for. But in the meantime, we're heading to Belgium for a quick break from the Basque Country Tour with Shelder Priest. Wout van Aert is the man to beat our arch nemesis of the save, and the man who's going to try and beat him is either going to be Chris Halvorsen or Soren Werenschgold. I mean, I said Wout van Aert was the man to beat. Sam Bennett is here, and I also believe in the beautiful Amiga Farmer jersey. Caleb Ewan is here as well. This is known as the Sprinters Classic for a reason. Those are the guys to beat. So six and a half games Go. It seems that all the relevant people are here at the front, apart from Ethan Hayter. I think also David Decker caught behind could have potentially won this race. 48 now at the very front. Taco van der Horn, he's trying to launch something. Second trying to follow, but this is the man we need to be looking out for. Let's use those gels. And to be honest, I've left this way too late, it would seem. Three and a half K to go. Let's boost it up uh, with Anders Garcet on the front. Hulgaard is going to have to go early. 2k to go. Halvorsen, why aren't you following your teammate, my man? And this is going to be a horrendous result today. Um, I can tell you that for sure because Werenschgold is nowhere. Halvorsen could be our leader. Let's follow Tim Malia. Let's try and come past Tim Malia. We're not going to. Can we hold on for second place? No, we can't. Malia takes it. Van Aert is second. We're going to be fourth and fifth. Oh, that was such a frustrating finale because Werenschgold had a lot more to give there. Anyway, back to the Basque Country for what looks like one of the potentially slightly easier stages. Maybe someone like Filippo Baroncini, a good sprinter. Biniam Gamay, who can get over these hills, could take this one. 12k to go then. As expected so far, this has been a bit of a transitional day, I was about to say, as Joao Almeida attacks. He is 10 seconds down in the GC. Of course, Pogaccia is here too, and UAE Team Emirates are playing their cards. I don't think there are enough big teams. Yumbo and Quickstep aren't in this little breakaway, so I'm just going to stay sat in for now. 10k to go. All right, then 4k to go. Joao Meda still just dangling out front. We have the power to bring him in if no one else does. Can we get in a position to even try and challenge for this stage? Here we come. Torsten Train round the outside. Almeida is going to be caught. Kron is on the wheel, apparently, of Primoz Roglic. Let's try and maybe kick now with Tobias, with Anders, with Kron as well. Can any of our guys challenge for this stage? Doesn't seem so. And the two riders I highlighted, Baroncini and Biniam Gamay, are going to run away with it. No bonus seconds for us today, but everyone should stay in the front group. So still the 25 riders vying for the GC are right there ahead of the TT. 19k, very flat for a change in it. Zulia. Remco is the pre-stage favourite, but Tade and Roglic are going to surely gain a massive lead in the GC. I'd love it though, if we could win the stage with Johan, Captain Price Peterson. Sadly though, I don't think that's going to happen. To be honest, we've just run out of gas before the line as well, I think, with Captain Price. Can we even defeat John Archibald at the same time as the Brit? But Nicholas Larson could be on an even better time than his team make Captain Price. Let's see. It's very close, but I think Captain Price does have the early lead. So it's Jonathan Castroviejo with the best time so far and what is a very, very close time trial, but Ilan Van Wilder, the talent for quick step does now take the best time. So it's probably quite helpful. We're third, fourth, and fifth in the GC. Our riders are literally setting off consecutively, but let's be real. This is the day we're going to lose big. Our time trialers, or our GC leaders as time trialers, are very poor. Johannessons, they're gonna lose time. Kron's gonna lose even more. Let's try and limit our losses. So Anders was 50 seconds down. Let's put him up to maybe 87. Kron was one minute and eight down let's put him to 86 whereas Tobias 53 seconds down it's really not good this uh, section of the course is slightly uphill which is why we're pressing it a little as we're actually catching Mike Woods and Anders is actually going to pass Mike Woods I mean he has 60 time trial it's not a massive achievement but really good run he's one minute and five down on the leaders it's not the complete end of the world Andreas Kron is going to be much worse off let's focus then on Tobias try and really push it to the line Kron is going to finish 1 minute 53 down, whereas Tobias press it up to 99 across the line, 1 minute and 21 down. It's not the end of the world. Let's see then if Primoz Roglic, he's not going to catch Mario Van Savenen, but can he win the stage? No, he can't. Look how close this TT is though. So following that massacre, we're of course completely out of the GC picture. I can't get over how close that TT was. Unbelievable. 20 seconds separating the top 16 riders. Um, but yeah, we are now 22nd, 23rd and 25th. 
we've got some catching up to do. So Norte Mountain Top finish at two Ibar on the penultimate stage. This is really the prelude to the big culmination of the race in Arate, but we need a good day to make sure we can keep up with these guys right here. And you know what? Anton Sharmik, he's been a pure domestique after losing time on the first stage. Let's throw him into today's breakaway. Nairo Man also trying to join him. And it will just be those early four attackers making up today's breakaway. Omar Fraile, Arsene Zakharov, a pure ruler, and Nairo Kintar with Anton Sharmik. If this group is allowed any more time, we could maybe challenge for the stage. He's on a great day. Yeah, this is now getting very, very selective indeed. Clermont Champusan decides to attack on the Azerki. We have Lutsenko here. Ivan Sosa is now done for Movistar. Sharmik doing a great job after being in that breakaway for Tobias Anders. Like I said, he's going out the back today. He can probably uh, cruise up at 75. I think I'm not sure if Kron's going to make it over either, which means we should maybe try and work for Tobias, although he's struggling as well for his energy, to be honest with you. But I mean, Biniam Gamay is still here. 2k to go to the top. I think we're okay like this. Let's try and keep Kron and Johansson in this group. The likes of Emmerich Mass is dropped. Alejandro Valverde is dropped. Just 24 riders are here. And Kron is feeling this effort. Should I attack with Tobias? I don't think so. I think we're just going to try and play a little safer today. Make sure we keep both of these guys here for the final stage. We're on the flat section then. 7k to go into Ibar. And this could be a tricky finale depending on how many attacks we have. And we have plenty of guys trying to get away. We need to follow with Kron and work for Tobias. Kron, I think, is going to suffer here. Right, we have 2.5k to go. Everything somehow is still together. Let's get in the wheel of Sergio Higuita. He has a teammate. He's a very good sprinter. Kron is here. Tobias is here. one5 to go. We follow Higuita into the finale. He doesn't really have anything though compared to Filippo Baroncini. Tobias trying to come around for some bonus seconds, but Filippo Baroncini, what a rider, what a victory. And with Tobias, we do get third place. Kron sadly is going to drop out the back and lose. Now, this race is tough, but Tobias is showing his grip, fighting for another third place. We haven't got a stage victory so far, but lots of decent results. That's our third, third place of the race. He's up to 14th, 1 minute and 20. 22 and just over a minute to make up to get onto that podium. We need a great day on this final stage. As Fabrizio Romano would say, here we go. It's the finale, Arate, and what a day here at Exilia we have coming up. Let's go, Tobias. Let's go. Tobias is past his trolling days. He's on a beautiful plus three. I'm wondering though, could we sneak Kron at three minutes into today's breakaway? We need to at least get to the front first. Here we go then. It looks like we've done it. Kron and Sharmik up the road. Mark Christian has been dropped from an earlier group. Chicone is here. Aronsman, Mike Woods is a strong group again. And I think they're allowing Kron up the road. This is perfect. Yeah, this breakaway has been absolutely destroyed. Even Omar Freire is now dropped. We only have a Trek Segafredo duo with Andreas Kron now at the front. What a difficult stage this is going to be with Arate still to come. And look at those percentages. Oh, but a big moment moment because Tade Pogaccia and Joao Almeida have just crashed for UEE Team Emirates. Mark Soler is here too and they are some way back. I'm not sure they have many domestiques. Gross Schartner is here. We have some Bahrain riders waiting up as well for their leader behind but that is a big moment in this race. And I'll tell you what guys, the gap back to Tade is too minutes. Oh, he's just about getting back in to the back of this group, the rear end. There he is. But you can see riders dropping off all the time. It's going to be really difficult for him to get back right to the very front. Oh, this is tough. 26k to go then. And we still have another climb before the Arate and just 30 riders are here. Torsten Train even was dropped. Our final domestique. He just couldn't hold the wheels. And Tobias is by himself. All right. And now with 5k to go, we enter the foot of the climb at the back of the group. That is exactly the disadvantage of having no domestiques. Roglic, however, is right on the front. And let's be real, this is going to be about setting our tempo, making sure we don't completely blow up. And if we can follow the likes of Roglic, maybe we have an outside shot at a podium. My word, Formolo is done. Chavez is done. McNulty is done. Avenapol, is he struggling? And Johansson has a little something left. And you know what? You know what? We are 1 minute 20 down. Let's go. Let's go for a little kick and we are off the front. Tobias is off the front with 2k to go. Can we now hold this to the line? Let's continue pressing on. What a ride by Tobias here at the Basque Country. Roglic 
is choosing not to follow or simply cannot follow. There are still 17 riders in the group Heinz. And are we going to win this race? Are we going to win the Azulia Basque Country Tour? We need just over a minute. I don't think we're quite going to get that. But we are going to win the final stage in flying fashion. Roglic, though, is going to win the race overall in what was a brutal final stage, which we mastered. I did not anticipate that finish. That was awesome. Tobias on absolute fire on Arate winning by over, well, by 45 seconds to Primoz. And that was such a selective day. Dorian Godon can climb this save. He's always up there in the mountains, it seems. Clement Champisan, good to see him developing as well. Remco, he dropped off. Tade, he crashed and he was really out of it from there. Not quite sure exactly where he finished, but if we take a look, at the GC, we move all the way up to second place. It's a shame not to win that race after such a spectacular final stage, but Primoz, he takes it to buy a second and Remco in third. What a podium that is. And well, we are greeted with the certain news that Marcus Sulgaard has entered the pinnacle of his fitness. And that is just in time for a certain race. And of course, that race is Paris-Roubaix, the hell of the north. It is our third chance this season to win a monument. We bottled Milan San Remo. We had a decent run at the Ronda. Let's go for victory at Roubaix. Oh, could we do it? Hallegaard, of course, in that fitness peak. Christoph as well. Surely our two leaders today. Away we go then. And Jonas Widberg is going to be our breakaway candidate today. Interesting set of race days because Christoph and Hallegaard, decent days. But Magnus caught on a massive plus five day. Could we see Magnus Court leading us at Roubaix? And the one thing I can tell you for sure is that the breakaway is nowhere near the size I suspected. Ryan Mullen, Consini, Doria Gadon, Matthias Norsgaard and Jonas Widerberg make up a five-man group. It's pretty tiny compared to what you'd usually expect at Roubaix. And Jonas Widerberg is going to have the honour of leading the breakaway onto the first section of cobblestones in Roubaix. I think of probably about 26 there usually are sections of cobblestones. Going to be hugely difficult. The gap is just under four minutes to the peloton. I may try and follow some more attacks if anyone else goes off the front um, and try and maybe join up to that breakaway. But around 25k has gone and still no attacks from the main group. And the gap has actually extended to the breakaway towards now five minutes. And still over 100k to go. Not much has happened. No real attacks from the peloton. The breakaway annoyingly are attacking each other, just wasting energy though. Oh, and there's a puncture for Florian Seneschal and on the approach to the Arenberg, this race is starting to get nervy and we are starting to see big splits for Mads Pedersen suddenly dropped out the back as well. 54 at the front. And here it is then, the True de Arenberg and our helpers are getting absolutely destroyed by this climb. I think it's probably time to bring back Jonas Vidberg to this group. We need some helpers to help our leaders. Let's bring him back right away. And so now a few attacks are coming. Seneschal now back towards the front. What a beast. Danny Van Poppel is trying something as well. I wonder if any big names are behind here. And yep, you can see a few. Betio is behind. We need the water though that Jonas Vidberg has been brought back to deliver. And right, now Vidberg is done. It's time to make a decision. Who is the domestique? And I think based on the energy so far, we're going to have to go with Alex Kristoff. He's going to be working for the guys today. Big call to make, I know. Could potentially win this race. But I think we have to try and protect at least someone here. And we are actually caught behind a little bit at the moment. Kristoff helping Court and Hulagard get back in. We'll put Court on the back of the train. And there you go. We're back in the main group. But attacks are coming off the front already. But my word, I'll tell you what, guys, we are getting left behind here. Kristoff is done. Hulagard is almost done. And that means Court is almost done as well. We still have 24 riders in the race. And we literally cannot hold the wheels. Despite this plus five day, we've got attacks off the front somehow. Sagan and Florian Vermeer are on flyers. Court is back in the bunch. We just need to try and survive. But I can't see it happening. Now the Monum Peval is here. And Marco Allaire is on the front. We've had more attacks, guys. I can't even see us getting a top 10, I'm afraid. Despite a plus five day with Magnus Court Nielsen. So we're now clearly in the chasing group of 17 riders. I'm not strong enough to contribute. We now have seven riders chasing the leaders. We have Askren trying to get to the wheels of Vanderpool and Van Aert, who have gone very, very early. 
we really needed to get Hulagard or Kristoff into this group with Magnus Court, then he may have had a chance. But our hope is that these guys, particularly Van der Poel and Van Aert, have just gone too early. Van Aert, the European champion, has dropped at Matthew Van der Poel. So 28k to go, monitoring the gap to the front of the race. It is down to 45 seconds. I think Van Aert and Van der Poel, they were overconfident, and I do believe they've gone too early here. Could we have a swing in the tide, the pendulum swinging into the final 25k? Let's hope so. And it's all packed together. We're back at the front of Roubaix. Here we go, guys. All right, Dylan Van Baal is the man to launch the counter-attacks after Van Aert and Van Der Poel have been caught. I'm struggling, though, to get to the front of this group. I know we still have plenty of difficult cobbled sectors to come, so I may try and conserve for them. Okay, the car for Delabra is here. If we can get over... The car for Delabra in this group. I think we have a great chance of staying there until the line. Come on, Magnus. Only 1k to go, I reckon, of this sector. And I think we're going to stay in this group, which would be absolutely massive. Stay to the front. Come on, Magnus. Push away. And these guys are struggling just behind. Let's make sure we're in this group here with Van Aert. Van Der Poel, I think, is here too. Up the road at the front. It is not second. It is still DVB. All right, but can anyone work here? I mean... Perhaps I should be doing a little more work than this, but I'm not sure I really can with Magnus Court Nielsen. We are in this group of 11 just ahead of a second group of 11, which is pretty important, I would say. Let's sit up in this group and try and conserve a little. Van Bala is 40 seconds up the road. Do we have a shot out of nowhere? I thought we were done with 50k to go. Okay, DVB and Sagan are still at the heads of the race. I'm going to play it cool. I'm going to play it cool. Just try and follow any attacks maybe from this group. Connor Swift trying to put the hammer down. I guess that is for his teammate Anthony Terji. It's down under 30 seconds to Van Baal at the front. Okay, 7k to go. I'm trying to hide my excitement. I really am, guys. I'm on the wheel of Wout Van Aert. And I'll tell you what, looking at our sprinting stats, they are dangerous if we can compete in a sprint today. Guys pressing away. It's almost time to pop that gel as we enter the velodrome. Let's pop it right here. It's 20 seconds to Van Baal and we are on the wheel of Wout Van Aert. This could be our best opportunity for a monument so far, but Van Baal is holding on 20 seconds. We're in the wheel of Wout Van Aert with Magnus Court. Van Baal is now caught as well. We're still following Wout Van Aert. 1.8 Okay, let's go. 1.5. Let's go. Let's go. Let's try and find some space. Magnus Court Nielsen trying to come through into the finale. Does Wout have it? Does Wout have it? Wout has it. And our arch nemesis is going to deny us our first Paris Roubaix. We finish on the podium. It's a great result, but Wout just had enough to defeat us today. Ay ay ay, ay ay ay, it's second place at Roubaix. Would I have taken it beforehand? Surely, but when we're in that situation, a mass sprint with Magnus Court still there. I had the feeling and I dreamed for more. Not quite today though. It's a second place. It's a great result. But oh, I wanted that top step and I wanted that cobblestone. And looking at his history, this is Wout Van Aert's third podium and second victory at Roubaix in a row. He was third in 21. He won it in 2022. You can see on screen there. And then of course winning it this season as well. What a rider this man is and it's funny because that result comes just as I felt the tide beginning to swing we defeated Wout van Aert a couple of times but um not that occasion not that occasion and um he gets the big one that is classic Wout anyway in the next one we do have the Ardennes Classics with LBL of course do we have the Amstel it doesn't seem we've been invited to the Amstel gold race this year bit of a shame I do enjoy that race instead we'll be heading to La Fleche and LBL and that'll be the final episode guys before the Giro d'Italia and we set off after the Maglia Rosa with Tobias hope you enjoyed as always hit like if you did hit subscribe to the channel as well if you're new and I will see you guys in the next one